All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to give you a super quick introduction to uniform continuity. And for this, let me remind you what continuity means. So definition, f is continuous at x0 if, again, for all epsilon, you can find some delta. So there is delta. such that, again, for all x, if x minus x naught is less than delta, then f of x minus f of x naught is less than epsilon. And now you have to understand, here we're fixing x naught, and you do everything with that x naught. So in particular, delta could depend on x naught. So delta could or could not depend on x naught. So for instance, if you have f of x equals 4x plus 3, then delta turns out you can show it's epsilon over 4, which does not depend on x naught, but if you have f of x equals 1 over x, then we found that delta was just the minimum of x naught over 2 and x naught squared over 2. And you see here delta depends on x naught, here it's independent of x naught, and the point is, if delta is independent of x naught, then we call that uniform continuity. So if you want upshot, if delta independent of x naught, we call that uniform continuity. So let me give you the definition. It looks really similar, but it's not quite the same. So f is uniformly continuous on a set S if, for all epsilon, there is delta such that uh, for all x and y in your set, set, if x minus y is less than delta, then f of x minus f of y is less than epsilon. I know it looks the same, but you have to understand, here, delta doesn't depend on x and y. So there's a delta purely just depending on e epsilon that makes this work. So as I said, if delta is independent of x naught, this is actually uniform continuity. So for instance, the function 4x plus 3, we found delta doesn't depend on x naught, so it's uniformly continuous. And uniform continuity, it just means continuous the same way everywhere. So for instance, if you take this function, actually sine of x, you see, again not you see Irvine, but they're equally awesome, means there's a universal delta okay, such that if x and y are in that region of size delta, then f of x and f of y are at most epsilon apart. And same thing here. Uh, again, no matter which point we're at, we have that f of x and f of y are at most epsilon apart. So this is uniformly continuous, not uniformly continuous, would mean something like 1 over x. Because you see, if you're far away from zero, then it's very easy to be epsilon uh, apart. Because the point is, you don't need delta to be very small to actually have that f of x minus f of y is uh, close to enough together. But suppose you're close enough to zero, then x and y have to be super close together to actually get f of x minus f of y to be epsilon small. 
So here you see epsilon delta actually here depends on where you're at, and that's why it's not uniformly continuous. And to finish, just two remarks. So very important, if delta is independent of x0, then um, it's uniformly continuous. But just because you found that delta depends on x0 does not mean that it's uniformly continuous. Because there could be a smarter person than you who actually found something that's independent of x0. And in fact, if you take f of x equals square root of x on the interval 0 comma infinity, you could maybe find delta to be square root of x0 times epsilon, but in fact, this is uniformly continuous, which is weird. And lastly, uh, the interval plays a big role. So for instance, if you take 1 over x on uh, 0 comma 1, we'll show it's not uniformly continuous, but if you take it on the interval 2 comma infinity, it is uniformly continuous. So the interval actually matters, and we'll show this in the next couple of videos. All right, thank you very much.